Just letting you know, this is only my spoiler first impressions of the episode. Check my pinned comment for a free gift related to this video. And to watch my unfiltered reactions with exclusive bonuses, join my Asha Media TV Club. The link is in the description box below. Now, here's my afterthoughts of this episode of Fringe. I'm totally Peter in that last frame, though. Okay, all right, all right. I've got the next episode to watch, so there's not too much there I'm going to babble on about. Let's focus on the actual episode itself, shall we, shall we? Very interesting episode. The concepts in there um, reminds me of a lot of viewer comments that I've read from my club members as well as on YouTube, but mainly from a couple of club members I'm thinking about. Trying to reinforce a little bit of the hinting towards destiny, hinting towards fate and stuff. And so I don't remember them completely, but I remember enough to know that that is definitely one out of many themes to contend with with this show. Okay, so now when it comes to this episode, I enjoyed the the mystique of it, you know, the intrigue as to what was going on with this Dana lady, her backstory with her family and tragedy. Her not being able to die, although I don't fully comprehend that 100% at this point in time. But what I do understand is in the end, she does end up dying. I mean, I could see how those that don't want to think beyond the the normal, right? Who don't want to think in the supernatural terms or paranormal terms would take the explanation that William said at the end along the lines of her molecules rearranging due to the bomb somehow. I could see that as being the most plausible scientific explanation. And I like how they introduced the extra explanation that some viewers may want to believe in. Like I said, it's a, I use the term spiritual, but you can, I'm sure, uh, find a different synonym that's more fitting, but I take it as something beyond the norm that we could under, that we could actually understand. Um, that, well, for her faith in things, the way she went to the church, from her perspective, Dana, I could see that as her thinking God's giving her a chance to finally die as the the as real story, right? Take her up into heaven kind of thing because she was in a form of purgatory. Oh my God, that's totally making sense to me right now. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I'm interpreting that. Angels went to bring Azrael up to heaven and I could see how they could apply that to her character. That's, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. All right. Um, but in, in following the story, it was, it was a good intrigue, a very good mystery. Um, I like this now, this new Lincoln Lee, not new, but the alternate version. I, I honestly, it didn't even cross my mind that we would possibly see the alternate version because I don't know what reason I had in my mind. I just didn't think it. And I like it. I just like seeing him now, you know, it's kind of Clark Kentish. Um, <laughs> so it reminds me of the glasses and all that. Uh, and of course, you know, they got to show the, the distinct contrasts on a physical level for sure with this actor. And I hope he's going to join the team. Uh, I, I was presuming he is at this point. Um, that makes more sense. And his dynamic with the team fits quite well. He bounces well off of uh, Peter. And speaking of bounces off, I have to admit, I appreciate what they're trying to show with Walter and William Bell. Seeing them kind of flow, right? Flow together was kind of cool. It was kind of cool. And Anna Torf, Wow, she's nailed it so well, so well that it took me a few minutes to adjust and be like, okay, that's William. And at the end, uh, now we know it just takes ring of church bells <laughs> or just any bell to get her to be summoned up. It's like a, a changeover. That's what it seems like. But there's a hiccup going on there, so... We'll see what that's going to be all about. I think it's going to be pretty much how I was kind of guessing at the beginning, where it's going to be like in the movie Get Out, Battle of Consciousnesses over, um, well, no, that's not in the movie. So if you haven't seen it, I'm not spoiling that movie. I'm just saying a, a, a battle within the body of two two um, personalities at war here, two souls at war kind of thing. I, th- I think that's likely what's going to happen there. Okay, favorite scene... Hmm. My initial favorite scene was going to be when they showed Lincoln for the first time when he just came. Only because like it's so memorable. 
you know, when I look at this episode, I'll likely remember, oh my gosh, that's when we were introduced to the prime Lincoln Lee. But to tie it in more closely to what this episode's about, yeah, it would be the last scene between William and Peter, only because there's just such a, it's such a revelation of possibilities related to Peter and related to William as well, especially with the bell ringing at the end and Olivia seemingly, uh, she came up there, she, she, she was conscious there for a second, trying to reach out to Peter and then went away. But mainly it's the monologue about the fate and destiny for Peter, which I have already been suspecting, and I've already said it before in previous reaction videos, that I, I think Peter and this machine, something has to come to pass with it. There's just so much focus with it that I'm like, does it make sense, even just in terms of television as an episodic thing, that you don't give a payoff with this somehow with the machine and Peter? Like, basically, he's a character resisting an eventuality. That's how I see it. And if anything thwarts it, I would chalk it up to the observers be finally intervening. Because that's my bigger suspicion when it comes to the observers. So far. Until I see differently, right? Allow me to have this journey, people. Don't be hinting too much stuff for me. In short, I think Peter's going to end up in that machine some, some way, somehow, no matter how much he tries not to. And I think the observers will intervene to get him out of there because it may affect things in a bigger way that maybe they don't want to see happen because perhaps all along they're trying to help protect humanity from making a big decision that could be Peter being in that machine. Something like that. Either way, I just think they're going to intervene. Right? Dramatically, that seems plausible because they're just watching 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 and then when they finally do take action okay boom it's action that matters action that helps the situation helps these two universes that are on the verge of colliding uh -huh. <laughs> oh. okay i'll leave it at that all right um ash emoji rating ash emoji rating uh, is it an excellent episode it is on many levels, actually. It's very watchable. So I'm going to give it a five. I, 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 there's nothing I feel kind of, you know, that pegs at me. It feels fine to even say five. So it's a five. A five ash emojis. <laughs> All right. So yeah, there you have it. That's my reaction to episode 17. Yes, 17. <laughs> Stowaway. You know, I look forward to reading any tidbits of trivia you know about this episode. Perhaps if you know if Anna Torv has talked about her process of trying to talk like Leonard Nimoy and William Bell character. Let me know if she did, you know, watch hours on hours of footage <laughs> of him, if you know that fact or what they're of. Therefore, you know the drill. Until my reaction to the next episode, I'm tuning out and peacing out. Buh bye bye Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos.